Hey, hello, this is Ari Astor with Indy is In, and it is in. I am convinced more than ever that some of the best songwriters out there are songwriters that you will never hear because they don't have something else aside from their musical talent that's marketable. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying like those who get marketed because they have something else that's marketable, maybe they're photogenic, maybe they're attractive, maybe they're shocking. I'm not saying that those people don't have talent. I'm just saying that there's so much undiscovered talent out there. Even with people with other things that are marketable, they're sitting home making three to four Instagram videos a day, trying to get their music out there, trying to get signed, trying to get heard, trying to make a career out of music. And I'm convinced more than ever that my statement the name of the show, Indie is In, I'm convinced more than ever that that's really the truth. Indie music is where it's at. Take a listen to this song. It's called The Diner. Um, hold on. Nope. Um, the name of the band is The Muster Point Project. And um, it, it has 13,000 views. It was posted um, a few months ago. Lyrics, guitars, bass, ukulele, piano, and vocals. Kevin Franco. Okay, Franco's the one who sent me the link. Electric piano, Oleg uh, Pisarenko, um, drums and percussion, Silvio Centimore. And you know what's interesting is that Oleg um, is awesome. I, I mean, I, I play keyboard and... I Of course I made a mistake there. I've been playing keyboard my whole life um, and I hear the keyboard in this song and I think, damn man, that's exactly how I want to be able to play keyboard. All right, so let's give a listen to the song The Diner. And as we listen to it, I, I've listened to it once already, once, once and a half. I listened to it once and then I and then I put it back on and sat down at the piano and was just kind of like messing around with it. And then I just stopped and said, okay, this is my next episode of India's Inn is going to be about these guys because this songwriting is fantastic, the arrangement, the engineering, the production, everything. Um, and something else that I like about it is that it's a little bit different. And, you know, it's one of those things that like as you're sitting down and you're going over it, you're like, Hmm. So I'll, I'll put the song on. Waitress calls you by the name that you call this place. You know the staff real well, and they all know your face. Like that's the inversion. So it's D minor to F major. Really nice. Just back and forth, D minor to F major. But, you know, you listen to the song and you realize just how amazing their production is on so many levels. You have, um, everything is well panned. The um, keyboard is like right here. You know where it resides and it's just killer keyboard it's amazingly played and the song is quite nice and of course the drums and the bass and everything and we saw that they have an actual drummer it wasn't um you know um, programmed drums to get drums to be that tight uh takes a lot of engineering it just does you gotta mic everything up you gotta make sure that all the eq is done you gotta put all the hits everywhere um, and the bass is just solid with the drums.
So the um, I noticed a little something here. So he's going back and forth from D minor to F. So I think he goes from to E minor to G major there. So it's really weird because it's, it's uh, it, and I always get myself in trouble trying to figure these songs out because sometimes people just sit down and they just write what feels good to them as they're writing the song. Um, but to play, if, if you're playing in the key of D minor, to play E minor, you, you're kind of, breaking the rules because you're making the flat six, which is the B flat, the natural six, which is B. But that all makes perfect sense if the song is written in D Dorian. You would actually sharpen that six. So you would be like, just kind of going back and forth. G and you know it's interesting because the G also has that B in it it doesn't have the B flat so it's almost like a key change to the key of G but it's interesting because you might think well okay maybe the whole entire song is written just in the key of G which would make sense right because you have that no it's not the song because if the song is written in the key of G, right, then you wouldn't use the F sharp as much as they are. And they're using it, I mean, you wouldn't use the F as much as you are. So the beginning of the song is D minor. And the D minor plays that minor third, it plays the F. So it's not in the key of G, because if it were in the key of G, then you wouldn't be playing the F all that much, you'd be playing the F sharp. So this song is essentially in the key of D Dorian, with a strong leaning towards D for the verses and G for the chorus. It's really interesting. I, do, I love this type of songwriting, and I hope I'm not losing anybody. I just think that it's ingenious. But that's one of the reasons why the song sounds so damn cool. Okay, ready? Let's go back. D. D minor. F major. D minor, F major, E minor, and then G. Love it. I love it. <clears throat> oh, this keyboard player is fantastic. Oh, that guitar, the tone, the bending. Are you kidding me? I love this. Absolutely love it. No, now you notice that? It goes back into the verses and it's like a punch. It's different because it really is. D minor. F major. The whole time the keyboard is just going nuts. I love it. And it's not too much. The drums, bass, guitar, everything's perfect. And the vocals are so crisp. It's insane. Everything is so well engineered. Look at that. He sounds like Raymond Zarek for crying out loud. E minor, G. This sounds like a different song. It's just a, it's a perfect transition. Man, that keyboard player is fantastic. Oleg, I'm jealous.
Mm, man, that guitar is good. Double track vocals. Actually, I think that's like three vocal tracks. Okay, the song must be coming to an end because they're perpetuating the, the chorus. Okay. And I love how there's no bridge. You don't need it. G, look at that. So when the song ends, when the song starts, it has a D minor feel. When the song ends, it has a G major feel, which is perfect because the song kind of is in neither key. It's kind of like D Dorian, so it should maybe end on something else, but no, it goes to, it essentially transitions to the key of G for all intents and purposes during the chorus, because if you were to take away the verses, if you were to completely take away the verses, I mean, you could, you could say that the verses are in D minor and the chorus is in G major. I mean, right? Because you have the, um, you use the B, right? <clears throat> You use, um, trying to think if you even use a chord that even uses the F sharp. I don't think you do. No, no. During the, ver during the chorus, there's an F major in there. I can hear it. During the chorus, there's an F major, not an F sharp. So it, it kind of changes to G major, but it stays true to the Dorian, to the D Dorian scale. It's just that the song ends on G. So like when the song ends and you hit a G, that's the key it sounds like it's in. I love songs like this that are kind of like fluid. And, you know, as a songwriter myself, I get all tingly because it's like, holy crap, this is just such amazing songwriting. As a song fan, you do hear it. You hear all those differences in there. You just don't need to explain it. But like the the stark difference between verses and chorus is simply because of the amazing songwriting, in my opinion. Now they could have done it on purpose. I mean, I, I've actually sat down before and said, okay, I'm gonna make the chorus uh, change key. Or I'm gonna do this, or I'm gonna do that. And, um, you know, I've done that. Or I just stink and sit down and, and write a song and then realize afterwards, oh, this song's in Mixolydian or whatever. You know, I had a friend of mine um, a while ago, a few years ago, write a song. And uh, he sent it to me. And he said that he's just, he was too tired <laughs> to send me the chord changes. Um, he was just beat and he, and he didn't really send me any chord changes and I had to try to figure the song out. And then I got back to him and I was like, dude, like this half the song is in Dorian and it's, it's all, it's, it's all over the, and he was literally like, is no, it can't be. It's not, no, you're just making that up. I'm like, no, seriously. And I explained the changes and stuff to him and he's like, all right, if you say so, he had no idea. But as I was picking the song apart because I had to put piano on it and I had to put bass and I had to put other things on it. I, I had to make, I make a chart of the changes. I'm not just someone who sits there and plays, especially if I'm going to play piano, I got to know the actual chords, you know, is this a sus fourth or what am I doing? And he just wrote a song and what, whatever sounded good to him. And he, play, he could play it on the guitar, but he, he just, couldn't get me the chord changes. He said it would have taken too much work. So I figured it out. Um, and I was blown away with the complexity of the song <laughs> that he just accidentally came up with, you know? So anyways, go listen to this band. Um, they are the Muster Point Project. They're fantastic, in my opinion. The name of this song is The Diner. I will go ahead and put a link down below in the description so you can click on the link and listen to the song without my interruptions. Anyways, my name is Adi Asta. Thank you for watching another episode of India's Inn. Until next time, keep it groovy.